Hello everyone, and it's day 33 in this Unity Game Development Journal. So today was one of those days where I wanted to learn something new and give it a try. So you're spending the majority of the time learning, the rest of the time and failing at learning. <laughs> so I attempted many things and many things started going wrong that I thought would go easy. And it got me a little bit worried. Now, uh, nothing to do with the new things I wanted to try that I was necessarily trying to learn today, but more so uh, this tile map here that I love. Trying to bring it into the game using the old system was not working and it was failing. Um, it was displaying the sprites, but it was uh, you know leaving huge gaps between. Everything was looking really ugly, and I thought, well, I got, I got a little worried, to tell you the truth, and I thought I'd have to change the tile set or redo that or something. What was happening, uh, some of the tiles were overlapping, so the uh, the cut lines for the tiles, like the squares, weren't exactly the same as the way I've been working in tiled in Photoshop, so I didn't understand that, and I couldn't get it to work. So, anyways, I gave up on trying to fix that, and decided, let's just tackle uh, what I was trying to do in the first place today, which was create meshes and subdivide the map into chunks. So I uh, went to tackle that, and uh, I had quite a good uh, bit of success with it. I'm going to just jump in here. Um, one thing I found out is that when you're working with the tile set here, I brought it in, and I split it up into the multi-sprites. Uh, that's one of the features of Unity. And that is what was causing the majority of the issues with the cutting up, and, and it wasn't cutting it exactly on the on the uh, line that I had set in Photoshop. And it was causing huge, huge problems, so I thought I was going to be screwed there. But when it turns out that when I was working with meshes, what I'm doing is creating a brand new texture and just translating the pixels, the pixel color, from the tile set onto the new texture. So I don't actually have to split this up at all. I just sort of tell it the region to look at, grab all those pixels, the coloring of those pixels, and transfer those onto my new texture. So really, really cool way of doing it. I did have to change the tile over to a single advanced texture type and set some settings up in here to make this work properly. So that is one of the changes I did there. I then went ahead and added another controller called the Tile Map Controller. And you can see this mesh on here. This is sort of the mesh that it creates. If I go into the code, you can see Tile Map Controller. So I have some uh, private variables here, a couple of public ones. One for the tile size. Um, this refers to um, the actual mesh. but And then there's a tile resolution for the actual size of the actual squares, tiles, sprites. And then I have a tile set texture 2D file that I pull in and that's where I grab all the information from for the coloring. I have some private stuff, so like the maps or the member size of X and Y, uh, the number of tiles, number of triangles, number of verts, that has to do mainly with tiles and meshes. Um, the V size, so the uh, vertices size of, on the X and the Y. Um, I have a mesh object, a, an array of, of vector 3s for the vertices, an array of ints for the triangles, a vector 3 array for normals, and a vector 2 array for the UVs. Uh, I don't need this awake anymore. Um, in the start, what I do is I build a mesh, and then after the mesh is built, I build a texture to put on the mesh. So let's look at building the mesh first. I come down here and I uh, create a new mesh. Then I get some information like the chunk size that I want to build from. So I'm not building the entire map. I'm building just a, a chunk of the map and I set a particular size for that for the game in the world controller. So I grab those there. Um, and then I have number of tiles. So that's just the size multiplied like the width times the height is the number of tiles I need. Um, yeah, so the size refers to number of tiles along the X and number of tiles along the Y. y that's the chunk size. Uh, the number of triangles, so there's for every tile, I'm, I'm doing a quad, which is a square on the mesh. And a square, a quad is made up of two triangles, so I just multiply this number by two because it's for the triangles. Uh, the vertices size is the map size plus one. So uh, if you have a uh, five rows, like five tiles wide, so there's going to be five tiles, but there's always, the vertices are like, the, you can think of them like the corners. So there's only, always going to be one extra set of corners along your width and your height. So then that's why I add one here to both of those. And then the total number of vertices is just those two numbers multiplied. 
The arrays um, I'm going to set up for the vertices, normals, and UVs. So I set those up based on the number of verts. And then the int array is based off the number of triangles times three. Because um, the triangles, we're going to have um, the three points on the triangle, right? There's always three angles. So uh, we're going to keep track of all three of those within an array. So in here, what I have is um, a loop that's going through the vertices size and setting up those vertices, normals, and UVs based on the, um, the tile size which is the number, uh, which is the chunk size. So like if it's a chunk of 16 by 16 tiles, it sets it up for that size. And then we loop through again and we set up all the triangles. So all the different points on where those are on the mesh. And from there, we assign the verts, triangles, normals, and UVs to that mesh we created at the very beginning. And we find the component called the mesh filter and we apply, uh, we set the mesh for the mesh filter to our new mesh. After that is done, so we have this mesh that's the right size of the chunk. So it's just like a whole bunch of triangles that make up the shape of our chunk of a map. So now we go to apply a texture to the top of that. So what we're going to do here is build a texture based on the uh, total chunk size times the tile resolution. So if it's, uh, say, 10 tiles wide and we have 64 um, pixel wide tiles, that's 640 pixel wide map, right? So that's just multiplying those two for our texture width. And our texture height is the same equation, only the Y. Um, so then we set up a new, brand new texture, texture 2D. So this is a brand new image we're gonna create with the texture width and texture height, giving it its size. The next thing I wanna do is get the individual tiles that we're gonna apply to that texture. So I'm gonna chop up the tiles. And this is a method up here that takes in that image, that tile set image that has everything on it from Photoshop that I created and it sets the, um, the width and height of it based on the tile set width and tile set height. You can get that information just by having the texture 2D uh, in this component. And then we're gonna have the number of tiles per row and the number of rows, just simply taking the tile size for X and Y and dividing it by the tile resolution. So in this case, 64 pixels. Uh, I don't really need this debug here anymore. Um, the next thing I do is I set a um, a two-dimensional array for color and uh, I call it M tiles or member tiles and this is setting up uh, a brand new array of the size rows times um, tiles and that's the number of tiles I'm going to have and we're going to set inside of there uh, an array of color data so I call it tiles but really it's just it, it keeps track of all the pixel colors um, for a, uh, a tile size, so 64 by 64 pixels. It keeps track of all those little pixel colors in this color array. And then I'm gonna go through and I loop through all the tiles in the row um, and I create a color array for that. So this is the tile set. So this is um, in Photoshop, this is this document right here. So this bit of script is looping through this whole image and it's grabbing, I tell it how big these squares are and it grabs each square and it sets all of those, uh, let's see if I can zoom in. I can zoom in really far and we can see the pixels. So you can see all these little squares, hopefully in the YouTube video. Um, there's all these little squares there. It, it grabs every one of those squares and then it keeps track of what color is in that square. Right, and it does it for all 64 times 64 pixels in this thing. So um, if I just zoom out, or where am I here again? I'm in here. So um, it does that and it, and it sets the colors, right? It gets the pixels for and sets it to that array. And then it ret once it's done that for every single tile, it sends back the tiles array. So now we have that here. So we're in the build texture, remember? And we loop through every single um, map um, tile that we want to place a texture onto in our mesh. And we say, okay, let's go and get the um, the tile at this coordinate that we're dealing with x and y. So for that coordinate, what is the tile sprite ID? Okay, now that sprite ID will relate to the color array here. It'll be the index for this color array here, the sprite ID. So now I say the uh, pixels color is going to be the same as the sprite ID, which is the index for our tiles, our color tiles. 
And then instead of getting the pixels, now we're setting the pixels to our new texture, um, which these are the pixels there. And then down here, we're setting on this new uh, texture, now that it's gone through all of the tiles, we set the filter mode. I'm doing bilinear just to see if I could blend it a little bit better. Uh, the wrap mode is clamp, so we don't want it to bleed through um, at the edge of the tile map. We want it just to stop. And then we're just going to apply our texture at this point where it just sets all of those pixels on the texture and then we can use it. Next, we take the uh, mesh renderer, which has a, um, a material attached to it. And you can have a bunch of materials attached to the renderer, but we want to just grab the first uh, material. Uh, and we, we say the main texture of that material, we want to set to our new texture. Okay, So that's what we're doing there. And that's it. Um, so essentially, I don't think there's too much other stuff. There's, there's some things like the world controller. I tweaked a few things, um, but not much. I don't think I changed much at all. The world chunk model that used to be called the world model. I changed it to the world chunk model. And all I did was I took out all this collider stuff that I didn't want anymore. Um, I'll, I'll re put that in later on once I get this working, but, um, I did say get current chunk cord. And now I'm just looping through the chunk size. Instead of the entire map, I just only loop through the chunk size to create the map. And that's the big change there. So create get current chunk cord is pretty basic. It's down here. Um, get current chunk cord. So I check to see if I have a player instance. And if I do, um, I can do this. If not, uh, the chunk cord will be zero, zero. It'll be just the first chunk. But if I have a player, I check to see where their position is. And based on their position, I find out what chunk they'd be in. So I take the player position and I divide it by the chunk size. And then I, I floor that number to a chord X and a chord Y. And then I pass that back as a vector two as float values. So up here, uh, what I do is I just take those uh, chunk chord and I create a uh, tile model array based on the size of the chunk. And then I loop through, or right, I get the current chunk start. Oh yeah, I figure out what the starting point is for the map. Like, if you're on uh, chunk zero, zero, you're going to be right in the corner, right? But say you're it's a chunk in the middle of the map somewhere, I need to know where the starting point is and the end point is of that chunk in the middle of the map so I can grab the correct tiles. So th that's what this does here. It just uh, grabs the current chunk start and then uh, adds the chunk size to that for the end and the start is where we start our loop. So it loops from the start to the start plus chunk size. And it goes through and I, just like before it creates the tile data, uh, it assigns the uh, sprite ID to that tile data and then it puts the tile data into this tiles array. And that's it. I took out the rest of the stuff. I just commented it because I don't need the collision radius was testing displaying the map there. So let's take a look at what this all does. I also have it so now the um, this runs in the editor, that one script. Uh, the tile map controller. Uh, let's go look at it quick here. So the tile map controller here. If I look at the top, it says execute in edit mode. Um, I actually put that on the world controller two here. So what that does is now I can see it in my scene view. I can see the actual map, whereas before I had to hit play to see it. This is just a little um, a tip to make it go faster. So here's one chunk of that map. Um, and we can play this and take a look at what it looks like. So there's nothing really um, happening except for me walking around and the, and the map being displayed behind me on a mesh. That's it. I can't, the collision doesn't work at all. In fact, it will break. And if I run off the size of the map here, it just keeps going forever. I'm not even touching anything. I can't control it anymore. Uh, just the way that I have it set up, it doesn't know what's there. So it doesn't allow me to input anything. And you can see there's a bunch of errors indexed out of range. So I have to fix that obviously but because we're dealing with chunk size now, not the map size, but I'm just mainly worried about graphics at this point. Um, the other thing we can do here is in the world controller, I may make, make a change and put this somewhere else, but I can set the chunk size to be, um, right now it's 32, so let's make it 64. So that makes sense. So we can go and play this. And now we'll go in here and we'll see, hopefully we'll see that it's much bigger. So yeah, so now we have a chunk size and our map is much larger. It goes all the way to there and it goes all the way up here. 
Well, oh, don't want to go off because it could cause some issues. Let's see if the top, yeah, it doesn't like that. So uh, there you have it. So the chunk size is now much bigger. So it does this whole area. And that's simply by changing the one thing here. It creates the texture differently. It creates the mesh differently. It does everything differently. The only thing it doesn't do is fix my colliders and my movement because I haven't worked on that yet. But that's pretty much that one change there. I may put that into a different controller, but for now it works there. So anyways, that's what I did today. That's as much as I got done. Uh, it is doesn't seem like much more than I've done the past few weeks, but it is a big leap forward, so I'm quite excited. And uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you feel like subscribing to follow along with this journey, uh, yeah, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.